in the wild and untamed lands of southern Texas lives a champion amongst men. A new breed of gunslinger sworn to protect the border along the 113-mile Rio Grande. Every day, more than tens of thousands of vehicles pass from Mexico into the United States. And with many of those vehicles come drugs. Providing the first line of defense is our hero, a U.S. customs officer named Popsicle. Popsicle is a Staffordshire uh, Terrier mix. Uh, he's three years and nine months old. And uh, he's my partner, he's my narcotic detector dog. Customs officer Rudy Carr works with Popsicle at the port of entry in Roma, Texas. Together, they run the line in an effort to detect illegal narcotics. Custom inspectors ask us to do a sweep on our vehicle. We just go around it at the primary booth when they come in from uh, Mexico. The preparatory command is to get, you know, get him on the chest so you can know that it's time to work, find it. He's trying to find marijuana, hash, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamines. There has to be order. As long as he has a very minimal order, you know, he'll, he'll find it. Okay. It's almost amazing that Popsicle has the ability to bond with anyone, let alone behave in human company. When he was uh, a puppy, he was mistreated by drug dealers up in Buffalo, New York. The drug dealer had no use for a pit bull puppy, especially during a raid. He put the pup into a plastic bag and stuffed it into a fridge. An officer saw the bag move and rescued the pup, who they named Popsicle. So he was all malnourished. He was non-responsive, hyperthermic. You know, he, he was very skinny. Even as he recovered, Popsicle showed what's known as a high play drive. That's perfect for a customs canine. He can be rewarded by playing with him, although sometimes that high play drive overcomes Popsicle. Popsicle quickly became an expert on drug odors. He learned to associate narcotic scents with rewards, like play. But to stay on top and keep his job, Popsicle still has to do four to five training exercises a day and pass them all. I'm gonna put a training in for Popsicle. There's a little baggie of uh, marijuana. And uh, usually we do this every day to train the, the dog uh, so we can keep him up enthusiastic. So I'm gonna place it inside the compartment of this bus. I'm gonna place it right there for him. And then I just run with him and then reward him when he finds it. If he can find it, if he don't find it, then we got trouble. Nah, he's gonna find it. Smugglers never stop inventing new and ingenious techniques to outwit the drug enforcement dogs. But masking the scent or encasing the drugs can't fool Popsicle's secret weapon, his sensitive snout. Popsicle has even detected a large quantity of marijuana concealed in metal boxes welded inside a gas tank. Good boy, good dog, good dog. Come on, buddy. Where'd go, Pop? Where'd go, Pop? He's rewarded with a rolled up terry cloth towel and uh, we play tug of war after he finds it and uh, it's making it enjoyable for him. I, I verbally and physically praise him off and uh, make a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of excitement for him. That towel is his paycheck. Working at the Roma port is a daily challenge. The average dog only lasts about six years. Popsicle's already been on the job for two and a half years. And in the U.S. Customs Service, any slip in performance is a one-way ticket to an early retirement. Popsicle must find every drug, whether for training or for reef. Each relationship between a customs officer and his dog is unique. No one works with someone else's dog because it's absolutely necessary that the dog and the officer have an intimate understanding of each other. You build a rapport with your dog, uh, you know what are his habits. I think Popsicle has a, a distinct personality that I understand. A lot of people, they just see him and he's a pit bull and they get scared of him. 
Actually, he's very playful. Sometimes he gets to be too playful that I know that he's not searching. So I have to correct him and tell him, you know what? Settle down, let's go to work. You know, we need to find it. A customs inspector pulls over a vehicle that he suspects contains narcotics. Rudy and Popsicle have to make what is called a secondary or intensive inspection. Rudy and Popsicle's continuous training is about to be put to a real test. I'm gonna go do the sweep. When I do the sweep, I'm gonna put him inside the vehicle, okay? Then he's gonna go do what he has to do inside. He's gonna come out, then I'm gonna put him inside the trunk. Finding a drug odor is called an alert. Most dogs alert by scratching, but true to his pit bull nature, Popsicle prefers to indicate narcotic odors by biting or chewing at the location of the smell. Good boy, good dog, good dog, easy. Good boy, good boy, good boy. If Rudy weren't quick to intervene, Popsicle could rip the source of the suspicious scent to shreds. He alerted to the trunk area. Right. But with uh, this time, you know, with further inspection, it didn't reveal anything. Sure. The odor was present. Anything. You know, at some point, maybe this vehicle had something, and it was dropped off before it crossed the border. It's because he, he alerted and aggressed to the uh, spur tire area. He started biting and scratching at the same time. So there's odor there, but it's no narcotics. Oh, well, we're still trying. Popsicle lives in the port kennels at Roma. It's the port where he usually works, trying to stem the flow of drugs coming from Mexico. But there aren't enough canines to work all 11 ports of entry to the U.S. along the Rio Grande. So dogs like Popsicle are sent to remote border crossings to keep the drug smugglers on their toes. But the border is long and the quantity of drugs staggering. We're at the port of Los Ebanos, uh, Texas, as you can see. It's the only hand-drawn ferry left in the United States. The volume of traffic, you only get like three cars at a time. It's kind of relatively slow traffic, but we still have a good quantity of narcotics trying to pass through this port of entry. Popsicle may go weeks without making a real alert, but it doesn't dent his enthusiasm, his unwavering work ethic, or his jaws. This is play for him, and we have to make it exciting, and every day, day in and day out, we have to make him realize that it's fun to work. Good boy, good dog, good dog, good boy, good dog, good dog, good boy. Good alert. Good boy, good dog. That's my pop, good man. It's about two and a half gram marijuana. And this is just different scents, just uh, salt and uh, pepper, just to have different scent. What you got there, boy? This was another planted yeah, test, but only Rudy knows it. that. A visit from Popsicle is a surprise and a deterrent. Go ahead, boy. Yeah. Cars often make a U-turn on the Mexican side when they spot Popsicle with their binoculars across the 30-foot-wide Rio Grande. Come here, boy. Yeah. Because Popsicle has a reputation. In 1998, one of the thousands of trucks crossing the border pulled into the inspection dock. It was an 18-wheeler carrying produce. And in with that innocent-looking load were 3,075 pounds of cocaine, worth millions of dollars. It was a record-breaking stash that no one was going to forget. And it was an especially fitting way to get revenge on drug dealers who try and kill their dogs. The 
of smugglers and dealers are probably the only people who don't like Popsicle's career as a great federal agent. He's not my pet. You know, I, you know, a lot of people think that these dogs are pets. They're not. They're working dogs. But we developed such a bond that I miss him. And I look forward to coming back to work every day. He gives me my kicks when I work with him because he's such a great little dog. But hopefully one day, you know, when he gets up to the time of retirement, that he'll become my pet and I'll give him a plushy life. Harvey is a six-month-old West Highland Terrier who's trying out for a new job. He's come to the Highland Seniors Home in the Blue Hills of Kentucky as a visitor. And this white ball of lightning has to calm down. Because he's only here on a trial basis. Harvey has 140 residents plus the staff to win over. Harvey seems to be winning hearts, but not everyone's a dog lover. This ain't no place for animals. Harvey has to figure out who to get close to, who to leave alone, and he has to overcome some of his terrier instincts. His tough little jaws, scissors bite, and hunting abilities could get him into deep trouble, and he won't get the job, a job that most people don't even realize exists. Like many, 98-year-old Charlie Moore had to give up his dog when he went to live at the Highlands. And my family had dogs all the time. We always had them. Till I got in condition, we couldn't take care of them anymore. So we just disposed of, well, we didn't dispose of them. I think I was the first one to meet him. He coming through the hall and I looked and I said, oh my gosh, because it looks like my dog. I had a dog to the same um, it was West Highland. And they had taken my dog away from me, so he takes his place. Uh. A local pet store brought Harvey to the Highlands for a one-day visit. His ability to relate to the residents and figure out who he could do what with was immediately apparent. That's our baby. Catherine Fry, a therapist at the Highlands, is watching Harvey carefully to see if he gets to stay permanently. And there's a lady who cries all the time, but the minute she sees Harvey, her whole face just lights up and she smiles and she recognizes him. But there are some that uh, maybe want to look at him from a distance. We've got one lady that loves to watch him, but she doesn't want to touch him. Right now, Harvey goes home with a staff member on nights and weekends. Life there involves a cat, but Harvey's good nature gets him through the ordeal. Although once again, his terrier instincts take over. If Harvey survives his trial period, he'll live at the Highlands full time. Back at the Highlands, Harvey is a clock watcher. As a hunter, he instinctively knows if it moves, catch it. Come on. Some of his other instincts from the cairns and burrows of the Scottish Highlands appear to help in his job. He can ferret his way through a tangle of wheelchairs to reach for a favorite resident. Harvey's real name is Sir Harvard Winston of the Highlands. Very Scottish, consequently very fitting. But as soon as the residents got a look, they quickly renamed him Harvey. He may lift the spirits of some residents, but there are families to convince that this dog can help provide a relaxed home atmosphere for their relatives. 
and the staff may smile now, but Harvey sometimes makes more work for them. In fact, Harvey makes many residents at the Highland smile, but he is a dog, and this might not be the place for a dog. He's now been at the Highlands for four months, and Harvey seems to be fitting right in. He doesn't shed, so he can jump around all he wants. And that energy encourages activity, although the daily volleyball game suffers losses. We had a little problem with, with uh, volleyball with uh, Harvey. At times, he uses his paws, the toenails. <laughs> so far, I think he's gotten three of the balloons. Harvey is moving from easily distractible, cute puppy to an independent patrol dog. Goodbye, A wheelchair topples. Elmer Bayer is thrown to the ground and left helpless. I had a little misfortune. I fell. And uh, Harvey summoned some help. And from <laughs> time on, Harvey was my dog. Well, he couldn't have been, couldn't beat that. I mean, he came to the rescue. After the accident, Harvey is given free reign to monitor the hallways for any resident who might be in trouble. But no one suspected that a feisty little dog like Harvey would know how to give palliative care. Harvey is often with very sick residents. He lies on their bed for at least an hour so they can quietly cuddle him. With the dying, he just knows what he's supposed to do. He has a gift for this work. Harvey's very important to me. He's the kissiest dog I, I've, I've ever met in my whole life. Harvey is a friend. Um, residents with, that don't even know me, and I've been here over a year, they know Harvey. They recognize him and they key on him because they're just so much in love with him. And I think that is such a great environment for them to be in. They feel more like they're at home and they feel like it's more an ownership of this place, that it's their home. It's not a place that they're staying. Nice, Harvey. Nice, Harvey. Harvey definitely gets the job. Often covered in lipstick kisses, he's the perfect dog for the Highlands. He's very important for everybody. It just kind of brings you a little bit out of yourself, and it's something to center on instead of yourself. Yeah, if anything would happen to Harvey, I think we'd all go bonkers. lovers of Hudson, Ohio, nothing is more enticing than a picture-perfect autumn morning. But with the fall comes a golfer's nightmare. It's the annual invasion of the long-necked northern tourist known as the Canada Goose. These majestic fowl create a mess of golf courses by eating the grass and paying for their dinner with slippery and unsightly deposits that damage the fairways and greens. The solution? A nine-year-old border collie named Tatty. With the aid of golf course manager Denny Smith, Tatty ensures that Ellsworth Meadows remains goose-free. Tatty will spot the geese quite a distance away. And with that, she gets very, very excited. She'll start quivering and whimpering a little bit. 
And then as we get closer, we'll start talking. Katie stays. She'll know that she has to stay and wait until she's under command. And once we get to that point, she'll get off the cart and make decisions herself. Sometimes it's just strictly a stealth okay. move that intimidates, makes eye contact with one of the, uh, the guardians of the geese flock, and uh, will upset the geese enough that they'll take off on their own at that point. Other times, Tatie will have to move right in with them. She'll go into a scatter mode, which is separating the flock up. When they're in the water, she'll go into a herding mode, where she will go in swimming after them and start breaking them off into smaller groups. And as she's breaking them off into smaller groups, again, they're frustrated because their unit is being dissembled. And uh, at that point, they'll fly away. Good job. Good job. Her intent is only to control the geese. There you go. Some people call it a harassment, but she has no desire at all to catch a goose or bring the goose back to me. It's a very humane, nonviolent way to take care of the goose population. Most of the golfers are now familiar with Katie and know she's here and come in and look forward to seeing her. And on any given week, we'll probably have four or five people stop by to see the dog with no intention of playing golf at all. She's a smart animal. She knows her job, knows how to do it well, and loves doing it. We'd all be better off if we loved our jobs as much as she does. But, uh, for her, it's a real pleasure to get up every morning and uh, go do her thing. We call it work, and she just has it as her way of life, and she loves doing what she does.